Stay tuned after the origin story for the actual figure review. If you like this video and want to see more content from Comic In, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends. In the illustrated mini-comics released with the first series of toys, He-Man is a barbarian from an Eternian tribe. The planet's inhabitants are dealing with the aftermath of the Great Wars, which devastated the civilizations that once ruled supreme over all lesser beings. The wars left behind advanced machinery and weaponry known only to a select people. An early incarnation of the sorceress of Castle Grayskull gives He-Man some of these weapons, and he sets out to defend the secrets of Castle Grayskull from the evil villain Skeletor. He-Man possesses one half of the power sword, the second half is possessed by a Skeletor, who uses it as his main weapon. When joined, the two halves of the Power Sword will provide the key to Castle Grayskull. This is why the two figures' swords could combine into one sword, when the action figures were initially released. In one early illustrated story, He-Man and Skeletor actually united their two Power Sword halves to form the true Power Sword in order to defeat a common enemy. Castle Grayskull is the source of He-Man's powers. Inside the castle lives a sorceress who grants Prince Adam his transformative abilities and communicates telepathically with He-Man. The episode Evil Lynn's Plot reveals, in dialogue He-Man delivers, that she also created He-Man's harness from a rare Eternian mineral called Corridite, which adds to his physical strength. To protect his family, He-Man keeps his double identity secret, sharing the knowledge only with Man-at-Arms, Orko, Cringer, and the sorceress. With the advent of She-Ra, Princess of Power series, this list is expanded to also include Adora, Spirit, Light Hope, Lu Ki, Madame Raz, and Cowl. The original cartoon series also includes the dragon Grenomir and the cosmic enforcer Zodak being in on He-Man's secret. The episode The Rainbow Warrior also strongly hints that Queen Marlena has worked out He-Man's secret but will not admit it. He-Man is usually accompanied by an assortment of allies in his battles such as Ram Man and Stratos. Adam does not actually reveal himself to be He-Man to his parents until the first episode of The New Adventures of He-Man, where he followed Skeletor to the world of Primus. Uh, Adam posed as a traveling merchant and the nephew of the character of Master Zebrian in order to disguise his secret identity. His transformation oath at this time also changed to by the power of Eternia. In 2002, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe was remade with a new toy line based upon the original line and an animated series. It told the story of 16-year-old Prince Adam is summoned to Castle Grayskull by the sorceress to take upon the identity of He-Man and the role of Eternia's defender. The portrayal of his character in this series was mostly consistent with Filmation's portrayal. Although the character of Prince Adam was shown to be much more brash and youthfully energetic than his 1980s counterpart. To convey the image of a teenage boy saddled with the overwhelming responsibility of defending the entire planet from evil. The second season episode, The Power of Grayskull, also revealed He-Man to be a descendant of King Grayskull, an all-powerful barbarian hero from Eternia's ancient past, who sacrificed his life to save Eternia from the evil horde and was the original wielder of the Sword of Power, a side hero, and also descended from the earlier king, Gerard. He was the original owner of, of Castle Grayskull, and his sword was concealed in the castle for centuries before being given to Prince Adam, who inherits his ancestor's own power, which is channeled through the sword, thus giving an alternate meaning for the phrase, by the power of Grayskull. Increasingly, He-Man is being viewed by worshippers of the goddess, Eternia's most popular deity, as being ultimately empowered by her through the sorceress of Castle Grayskull. The Sword of Power, as He-Man's main weapon, is also viewed as a symbol of the goddess's power. Both as He-Man and as his alter ego, Prince Adam, He-Man himself must view himself as specially endowed by the goddess through the sorceress Tilaadna. He-Man and Prince Adam also has a twin sister named Adora, who was kidnapped as an infant by Hordak and taken to the planet of Etheria and raised by the evil Horde to become their forced captive. Adora discovered her identity as Princess of Eternia and became She-Ra, Princess of Power, to battle the evil horde on Etheria. It was rumored that she would be reintroduced in the third season of the 2002 He-Man and the Masters of the Universe TV series. However, the series was canceled after the second season and thus she never appeared. An updated action figure was later released as part of the revamped Masters of the Universe toy line. The 2004 she toy was an initially exclusive to the Wizard World Chicago and San Diego Comic-Con, comic book, and pop culture conventions. In 2002, Mattel released a new toy line of Masters of the Universe toys. 
Sculpted by the Four Horsemen, the new figures were both more detailed and more stylized than previous lines. The toy line was relatively short-lived, with some ascribing its failure to dis distribution and short packing problems. The Power Sword itself has its own origins. Long before being passed on to Prince Adam by the Sorceress, the Power Sword was held by other heroes. First wielded by the most powerful wizard in the universe, Hero, given the Sword of Life by the overlords of the Timeless Dimension of Trolla, Ro was told to go forth and combat evil. During one such epic battle, he was infected with a techno-organic virus by Horde Supreme and sent through a vortex to the magic planet of Eternia. Once there, he was healed by Eldor in a mystical pool which absorbed his virus. In gratitude, Hero swore to help free Eternia from the Snakemen and Horde invaders. He defended the free people alongside the great King Grayskull eventually bequeathing his sword to the king upon his heroic death. A hundred years before Prince Adam was born, a warrior from deep in the savage underground city of Tundaria rescued a young woman who turned out to be the goddess of Eternia. She provided him with cosmic battle armor and a sophisticated ray that could tap into almost unlimited power. The goddess tasked him to protect both halves of the sword of He and keep them apart lest they fall into the evil hands. Like many warriors before him, Wondar became known as the He-Man. Known originally in canon as the Sword of Life, in the initial Mattel toy line, the He-Man and Skeletor figures each came with half of a plastic sword which could be joined into one complete sword, corresponding to the storyline in the included mini-comic. Together, the combined sword was used as a key to open the drawbridge to the castle Grayskull playset. Skeletor's goal in the book is to acquire the other half of the sword hidden inside the castle in order to obtain the sword's total power, adding that the magic fires created by ancient scientists and sorcerers will blaze again once the two halves are joined. The specific purpose of the quest is also made clear. The power sword can be used to open a hole in the dimensional wall in order to bring reinforcements from Skeletor's dimension of origin, which would allow Skeletor to conquer Eternia's dimension. Once the two halves of the power sword are joined, Skeletor is able to use the sword to command various objects to attack He-Man. However, the spell is broken once the sorcerer splits the power sword into two halves again, hiding them and making the power sword the only key that can open the castle's jawbreak when inserted into an enchanted lock. In the cartoon, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the power sword is given to Prince Adam by the sorceress of Castle Grayskull as the key to transforming into He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe, and transforming his cowardly pet tiger, Cringer, into the fierce and brave battle cat. The war cry with which Prince Adam thus transforms while holding the power sword above his head with his right hand begins by the power of Grayskull, whereupon mystical lightning strikes the power sword and transforms him. He-Man then seizes the tip of the power sword's blade and completes the war cry. I have the power. Princess Adora, He-Man's twin sister, has a companion power sword called the Sword of Protection, which is identical except that it has a glowing jewel in the hilt. The jewel allows Princess Adora to channel her powers, as her sword is learned to have been a clone of He-Man's sword crafted by the goddess of Grayskull. She transforms into She-Ra by saying, for the honor of Grayskull, I am She-Ra. Both swords appear together in the Origin of the Sorceress episode of He-Man. The New Adventures of He-Man cartoon takes He-Man into the distant future to, to the alien planet Primus. The sword itself is updated to look more futuristic and is sometimes able to fire bolts of glowing energy. In this series, Prince Adam's phrase to transform into He-Man is changed from by the power of Grayskull to by the power of Eternia. Cringer and She-Ra are not part of this series. And in this series, Skeletor is not interested in taking the power sword for himself. In 2002, the sword was heavily redesigned for the cartoon with a much more complex, mechanized look. When held by Prince Adam, it appears smaller. However, during the transformation sequence, the hilt pivots on an axis and changes shape taking a new form when it is in He-Man's hand, and is more explicitly shown growing in size in the revised transformation sequence from the second season. In the series finale, it is shown that an alternate mode can be accessed wherein the blade splits in the middle and opens to reveal another emerald blade inside. The sword then appears to be two fang and a snake's tongue. The mode of the sword was used to battle Serpos, the giant snake deity that was imprisoned in Snake Mountain. Hey guys, welcome back to Comic Ed, and this is John Wise here, and I am going to go ahead and review the Masters of the Universe 2000X He-Man. So here we have the man himself, He-Man. 
Um, He-Man here has a new sculpt from the Four Horsemen. Let's go ahead and go over the sculpt of this figure here. So he resembles He-Man that we know with some differences. Um, with the redesign that they were going for, they wanted kind of a new look. Uh, they wanted him to look different than Adam, and he does. Uh, his the hair is, and his face is more of an anime feel to it. Uh, we have, of course, the harness, which no longer has the gray. It's more of the brown. We, but we have some nice little shiny gold here. Right around here. We've got the nice cross here. And it's got kind of a metallic look to it. Uh, the belt also has that same uh, metallic, like gold and red, all the way down to the pouch details here. Of course, he still has his classic loincloth, and he still has the boots with the wraps. So, pretty much, it's He-Man, but updated. And that's really what they were going for, and these were some pretty cool figures. And unlike the uh, vintage figures, they had special features. One of He-Man's special features was, uh, of course, he had the twist. Uh... His arms can move out, forward and backwards. These had more articulation too than the vintage, which had the five-point head, waist, and legs. The wrists move. His head moves from side to side. Not on a ball joint, though. These aren't like the classics. Uh, his legs move kind of up and down. Uh, it's very soft loincloth, so you can put it. You can get some movement out there. But it wrapped all the way around. It still hindered it a bit. Um, the legs went out a bit. So. Not too bad all in all for articulation. And of course, what would He-Man be without accessories? And again, when going back and redoing them, they wanted to kind of redo the uh, accessories they came with too. Of course, we have his battle axe. Which... He has a lot of the golden red metallic motif that the figure has. Very um, mechanical, very technical. Um, they went really more towards the uh, mechanic side than they did fantasy with this. And you can see it goes all the way up and down the handle as well. We have his shield, which again has some more tech to it. If you turn it over, it has a lot more tech to it, wires and everything. I'm not sure why, but... And of course, He-Man wouldn't be He-Man without his power sword. Now, there is probably one of the biggest changes to the power sword. Um, some fans liked this, a lot of fans did not. I... I wish they would have stuck with the original, the original story to the, uh, the show. The show was supposed to be more of a uh, sequel than a total redo. So there's a story behind this power sword. But unlike the vintage sword, this also has a special feature. That being, when He-Man raises his sword by the power of Grayskull, his sword opens up. Like so. And then the power gray skull would come through here. And again, all the tech. Laid throughout the sword. And then of course the sword would then close. And there you go. So it was a nice little cool feature. Um, and all of these, of course, fit on He-Man. Um, now, something that always bothered me about the vintage He-Man figure, it didn't have a place to store his sword. So we just kind of stuck it in his uh, his back of his vest. There was no actual holster. You'll notice this actually has a place for his sword. Which means his hands are perfectly open to hold his axe, which slides right in there, and his shield. Like so. And now He-Man is ready for battle. So there you go, guys. He-Man from the 2000X Masters of the Universe line. All in all, not a bad figure. Um, 
the show and the figure line really had um, its issues. Uh, one of them, of course, you couldn't get a lot of the uh, basic figures because uh, they were loaded up with He-Man and Skeletor figures. The racks were. Um, that was probably the big complaint. Another complaint was some of the figures were just looked way too different uh, than the originals. I like these. Um, I like the fact that, and I'll show you this in other uh, videos, that each figure, they didn't have the same feature. Each one had its own unique special uh, attack or special feature for the figure. To where the vintage, the only ones they really had was the waist. You know, so. Um, so there you are. Uh, these are, these are pretty cheap. On places like eBay, and you can still pick them up on Amazon. Um, and there you go. Happy hunting. By the power of Grayskull. And of course, if you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like, comment below, and share with your friends. <laughs> I hate you.